Okay, right behind Sean yep. is the Nut and Fancy Aviation Museum. Oh, yeah. You may have thought I was joking about it for the first time ever on camera. I do have a light, but it's not turned on. You can pause it and look at all the pieces. I think most of those have made it on camera. They will continually rotate into the videos. You can see the mighty KC-135 Stratotankers right here. The best plane ever created by mankind. Big beast. It wasn't. <laughs> but I did fly it. This is Sean at TMP. Here. Oh, what's up? What's up? We are in the TMP garage. We're going to be talking about cold weather motorcycling. I think you motorcyclists in the Nut and Fancy Project, of which there are more. Hopefully. There are more. You guys will like this. It's going to be feature length. We're going to delve into our philosophy in cold weather motorcycling. A uh, lot here, a lot to unpack. It's all based on a ton of riding, a ton of experience. Are we experts in cold weather riding? Mm, I know what you're thinking. Now I'm going to answer for us. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. I'm going to say Cheers. yes. You and I have done it so much. I, I would yeah. say that we've reached the expert level. We know what works. Granted, for us, maybe your mileage may vary, but yeah, I would say we are. Sometimes it doesn't feel like you are when you're out there, but you know. You, if you've ill prepared and chosen <laughs> wrong stuff. Yeah, or you, you find your spots. When you're out there riding long enough, you'll find areas getting cold, and I'm like, gosh, I suck at this, but you know, <laughs> you, get, you get better. Uh, he's being yeah. very uh, humble. Uh, Sean has a good assortment of gear, great motorcyclist. I mean, honestly, uh, Sean, I just really love riding with you. Safe, super proficient. I never have to worry about Sean. I said that before. So in the background, I have a selection of my own riding gear. It's back there on the wall. I actually used three quarter inch iron pipe, plumbing pipe, screwed into yeah. studs to hold the gear. By the way, that does work quite well. You were surprised. I'm amazed at how well those posts are holding mm -hmm. up. I mean, they're they're honestly yeah. amazing. Yeah. They, they can take all of that weight. Those jackets are not light. We're talking padding, yeah. leather, you know, zippers, everything's all heavy duty construction. And there are multiples, as you can see, hanging on those racks mm -hmm. and they are holding up great. And so that, that really surprised me. I tend to kind of over engineer things because there's just so much stuff that fails so easily. But, uh, but those are very impressive. <laughs> I'm reading my labeling. It was for my wife. I forgot those were out there. Yeah, I label stuff humorously all the time. So I hope you don't mind this very informal setting. We're not mic'd up, uh, but I think you'll be able to hear us just fine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk to the motorcycle. It's a very organic video. I'm going to go back on the rack, pull stuff off while we're making points. Mm -hmm. The objective of this video is, number one, to get you safe and stay safe as in all our motorcycle videos, of which we've done more than a few at this yep. point. Yep. And uh, I'll ask Sean, I'm a normal motorcyclist and I feel uh, that it's best to park my bike during cold weather. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I, I don't like it at all. Um, yeah, the, I know a lot of guys like to just throw it in the corner of the garage, hook it up to a tender, and then leave it there. But, you know, I think that riding year round is important for maintaining your skill set. And it's much less intimidating once you have built a little bit of a foundation and you understand the risks that are involved, mitigate those risks, and then go out and you'll find that there are things about winter riding that are really enjoyable. Agree. <laughs> so, that's one of the foundational principles of cold weather riding in this video, is that we do want to push back to, in a large part, to be honest, with you parking your bike when it's cold. Mm -hmm. you, you want to, when it's safe to do so, when you have the proper gear, mm -hmm. we're gonna hit on that pretty hard in this video, to get out and ride, even if it's colder, to you. But I, there's so many motorcyclists I know in Wyoming and Utah, dude, they will not bring their bike out unless it's <laughs> 60 degrees or above. <laughs> so generally that means they're riding about four times a year. And mm -hmm. these are guys who consider themselves motorcyclists, yeah. Sean and I are a little bit different. We've modeled it with many, many at this point uh, motorcycle adventures that nobody watches, by the way. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> but we still keep putting them out because it is yeah. core content. Part of TMP for over 11 years now, bro. Yeah, yeah. 11 years we've had motorcycles yeah. in the Nut and Fancy Project and it hasn't gone anywhere. And they're fun to watch. And if you're just like chilling and looking for a way to relax at the end of the day or it's whatever. Fun. Dude, and throw a little music in and watch the motorcycle videos, maybe have a little bit of the content in the background. We like having conversations a lot of times while we're riding, but you yeah. know, there was a couple that we talked about after the fact and kind of narrated. So. I like those too. I like both formats. Mm -hmm. 
as a producer of the show, it's easier for me to do it in camera, in microphone, in helmet. Mm -hmm. That's easier. It's but just a hard setup. It's a lot of hard setup, a lot of logistics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, we do go everywhere when we talk, and there are no taboo subjects. There's a lot yeah. of politics involved. Mm -hmm. um, good politics, by the way. Mm -hmm. But back to writing during cold. Yeah. Write all year long. Mm -hmm. And I have heard in the donation environment, the Patreon of Clubhouse, by the way, be a member, stay there for the rest of your life. He's a Patreon member. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, they're the reason we produce your show the way we do. Thank you for providing the funds to do it. So they provide gas, uh, clothing at times, moto clothing. Those funds are used for the adventure of TMP, whatever that is. Yeah. Ride all year long. I wouldn't say, philosophically speaking, <coughs> sorry, getting over cold, maybe don't start out winter riding. Would you say that's probably a good thing yeah. philosophically? Yeah. They get a good foundation practice when it's warmer. Absolutely. I would say, yeah. I mean, obviously, whenever you actually get the bug, if you watch one of these videos and you say, you know what, this is it, I'm getting a motorcycle, go do it. It's it's awesome, and you should do it any time of year. Right. But I would not recommend starting out with winter riding mm -hmm. if you can avoid it, because it, it does require the base level knowledge of riding and a lot of gear, and then you're also, the entire time you're going on your first few winter rides, it's experimenting and you are finding out you're right. learning quickly it's a steep learning curve so learn the bike first learn get your skill set first and i still recommend taking the mssf uh, safety course mm -hmm. motorcycle safety foundation course that's a great thing to go through it'll teach you a lot of good things i went through the alameda county sheriff's uh safety course you have different tier levels first second third level tier maybe i go back later and do the other tiers all that's good. The more you get, uh, the better you are, and we want to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. That being said, let's just assume you made that decision. Let's assume you have been a, a warm weather rider like most motorcyclists for quite some time. But like most motorcyclists, when it gets below, I don't know, 40 degrees, you say, I'm done. What we're going to give you is a philosophy and a gear set mentality, a systems approach, mm -hmm. you know, me and my systems, mm -hmm. about solving, as Sean said when we were talking about this, solving problems yeah yeah isn't that what a system does no matter what it is if it's a tactical system you say what is my problem well i have 20 magazines i want to carry how am i going to solve it mm -hmm. okay there's a lot of different interesting approaches that we have covered in the project mm -hmm. here are, is a non-tactical approach but we're cold mm -hmm. yep and and so to approach that problem right so you don't have to start from scratch there's a lot of foundation out there and so what you can do is approach it like the people that are doing a lot of winter sports. There are a lot of people that go skiing, snowboarding, and snowmobiling all year long in the winter. And so you can take some of those foundations and you can apply them to the motorcycle world. And that's an excellent place to just get started. Okay. Good point, Sean. Let's give you, Mr. Motorcyclist, three temperature ranges by which we go by. Mm -hmm. Sean, take it away. All right, so I think that in the hot range, if you're in the summertime, that's around the 80, 85 degrees and up. If you're above that, you're very likely to want mesh. You're going to want water-cooled, you know, vests. Which he rides with all the I time. I ride every time I, in the summertime. I'm He'll soak it, and he, he loves it. Oh, yeah. It, it helps tremendously in the summertime, especially in the drier environments. And then you're going to go down a level from that, I would say, is roughly the 40, maybe 45 range up to that 85 range. So... That's going to be your spring right. and fall riding, which is awesome. I love it because it's very simple. You don't have to take a lot of gear. And a lot of the stuff that you wear on a regular basis can flex. And so that's a great temperature range. Then it's when it gets below 40, that's when a lot of guys, like we were saying, are going to park it, plug in the battery tender, and say, I'll see you in the spring. Done and till spring. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so those are our temperature ranges yeah. more or less. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. So it's yeah. 20 degrees outside. Are you going to go motorcycling? Yeah. Absolutely. Alone, you'd go. Uh, I'd still do it alone, honestly. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't go to run an remote. errand. To run an errand, um, it's twenty degrees outside. Yeah, yeah, I'd still do it. Hardcore, baby. Yeah, okay, for me, my my temp cut off from when I'm like, eh, I'll take a car. I'm a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. Maybe 35, 40. You know, what I'm kind biggest, of a wuss that way. Not to say that I haven't done a lot on camera here. Oh, yeah. Colder than that, I've been caught in the teens, I would say many times at this point. Uh -huh. But if you're saying, hey, I'm going to purposely go out, mm, maybe, maybe not. And it also has a lot to do with precipitation. Yes. Because yeah. if it's precipping, i.e. Uh, raining to turn into snow, there's no way. No. Yeah, that's, that's a safety concern. Yeah, but you're saying if it's dry, 20 degrees, mm -hmm. 
On no problem. Really cold, dry winter days when it, the sun is out. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do it. I'll love it. I'll go down to ten. It's it's okay uh, for a short errand, running around town and things like that. But the the biggest reason why you can do that is you usually have a rack, a lot like what you're seeing back here. Yeah. That's going to be right near your motorcycles, and that's where you're going to gear up every time you get on your bike. And so that rack will have different gear on it based on seasons. And so when I'm in the middle of the winter, Perfect. I've got my yeah. snow boots sitting next to my winter coat. Yep. Next to a vest, and that's what I'm putting on before I jump on my bike, and it doesn't take a whole lot longer to do it. Sooner or later, if you stick to motorcycling and you're like us, you become all season motorcyclists, mm -hmm. you'll have an inventory. Mm -hmm. And that really, we were talking about it off camera, like it's really a good way to know if you have a friend that rides, ask to see his setup room. Yeah. And if you see something, sorry, like that, <laughs> like Sean has, you'll know that guy's legit. If he has riding suits for all seasons, different riding gloves, different riding boots. Now I'm saying that someone has been in it for a while. It takes you a while to get to that level, but you'll know the guy, okay, legit. And it's a lot like the guns thing. We talked about how when you buy a new gun, a concealed carry gun especially, you usually have one gun and five holsters. Right. <laughs> and so that the motorcycles are like that. You got one. You'll bike. find out what works for you. Yeah. You got one bike and then you got, you know, five jackets. <laughs> Point being is yeah. pace your purchasing purchasing mm -hmm. when you start out with cold weather stuff. Mm -hmm. Find out if it's right for you. Everything we're saying, maybe you try it and you go, you know what, I still hate riding when it's 40 degrees. Because mm -hmm. everybody's different. We acknowledge that. We, we feel like, honestly, and this is not lying, that he and I like driving in cooler, sometimes even cold weather, more than we do warm weather. Mm -hmm. You can't take an air conditioner with you. When we were driving in Vegas on that one ride, it was like 110 degrees out in the desert. We're just dying. It was brutal. I mean, and you had your, your vest all wet vest. down, but it dried out after <laughs> yeah. a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take long. If you're geared up properly in cold weather, let's say it's 30 degrees, no precipitation, no snow, no ice, you can be comfortable if you're prepared. And that's we're going to give you specifics on that as we go along in this feature length motorcycle video, TMP. But pace yourself. Don't just jump in and buy all this expensive winter clothing. Like this is my 2013 or 2014 climb latitude. It's seen a lot of wear. I just washed it, so it's relatively clean now. But this is expensive. You're looking at one of these is like 600 bucks, dude. Yeah. So don't go run out and buy one of these. Maybe start cheap like he did. Yeah, yeah. No, this is. He's a, wearing a Kilimanjaro. First, yeah, first gear. Uh, this is a great jacket to, for beginners because it, it hits a lot of the points. It does not have the refinement of Climb. Climb, they are very responsive to the market. They put all the best materials. All best the, nylons. All the best everything. This nylon is not nearly as high quality as the yeah. Climb. I'm just saying it's not. Yeah. It's a Cordura. It gets the job done. Mm -hmm. And so... So get something that maybe doesn't cost quite as much, but just to get you rolling. And um, you got some good road wear on that, by the way. Oh, this thing is yeah. This thing. This was in my wreck, my uh, twenty <coughs> twenty one. Yeah, uh, dude. Motorcycle crash, and so um, <coughs> it's 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 seen some use, and it does have a zip out liner. It's got a lot of great features to it. This is an excellent starter jacket, and it doesn't cost that much. I want to say they're in the 130, 140 range. Maybe a little maybe more. Maybe a little more. One eighty, something like that. But but, but way cheaper than climb. <laughs> yeah. So the point being is that you can get into something like a Kilimanjaro and it's not something you're going to have to immediately get rid of. Right. It right. can grow with you for a long time. In fact, mm -hmm. if, if I don't know if I would ever replace that. If you uh -huh. had a Kilimanjaro and go, oh, I need to climb now. I'm like, mm, do you? Do you really? It's, not really, it's really that good. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're kind of getting into some specifics. I want to hit that later. We're talking right. more philosophy here. Okay. Yep, yep. And so um, the point being is pace yourself. Don't jump in and buy thousands of dollars worth of gear if you don't know if you're going to like cold weather riding. Start off a little bit small. Maybe use some existing warm weather kit you have, albeit it won't have protective elements in it. Mm -hmm. Try it, and then if you go, you know what? It is good for me. Yeah. As you go along, just pace yourself little by little if the world continues to operate <laughs> and uh, get better stuff later on. Yeah, the first thing I ever rode in the winter with was regular snow pants, ski pants. Right. Right. Exactly. I went out with you several times, and that's what you had. Yep. Yep. And Nor did I ever make fun of you for that either. No, I was just, just like, hey, this it's is a starting point. That's where you start. And then later on, if you find something that now, hey, I'm riding more in the wintertime, I want some padding under there. Now you get some winter riding pants. Amen. Well yeah. said. Yep. Tell me about the benefits of cold weather riding. Cool. Cold weather riding. So there's a few of them that I can think of off the top of my head. Number one, bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Okay. Yes. And, and it's not as bad when you're riding in the, the really dry desert environment, but man, you get into some of those forests and we get 
screamed. Oh my gosh. You're in California, covered. we've been in California, we've gotten destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Destroyed California, the bugs. Up into Oregon. And we've oh done Wyoming God. rides, destroyed. Yeah. Oregon, <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> So, so the bugs are gone. That's one great thing. Uh, the second great thing is you do, in the summertime, one of the biggest things you're going to struggle with is keeping all your safety gear on because it is so tempting to just toss on a helmet, wear a t-shirt, and go blasting over to the grocery store. But you want to have that protection because you're dressed for the slide, not for the ride. Amen, brother. So, uh, in the wintertime, it's way easier because you're going to put all this stuff on to stay warm and as protective. So that makes it more comfortable when you have all of your safe gear on. Um, another thing is in the wintertime, you're not dealing with, you know, all of these trailers and traffic and RV traffic. Yeah, and there's just, there's so much more going on in the summertime with a lot of very inexperienced drivers and the freeways are much more packed. And so in the winter, a lot of times you can find solitude on a lot of these back highways that nobody's really traveling during the winter season. So if you're telling great. me we're going to go down PCH, Pacific Coast Highway, of which we've done many, many <laughs> times, shown it many, many times. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather go during the winter. Yeah. Summer, spring, do it. We're doing, I mean, it's doable, but we're passing on double yellow yeah. all day long. Yeah. It's passed. Either that or you're doing 20 miles an hour down PCH yeah. and yeah. you're not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so benefits, no bugs. I love that one. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Less traffic. On the flip side, to be honest, at least in Utah, for instance, they're not used to seeing motorcyclists as much. They already mm -hmm. suck. <laughs> Utah drivers are some of the worst in the nation. And then, so... Uh, realize that they may not be used to seeing motorcyclists that are going to be uh, worse than they normally are. So this is one reason why we like this. Bright colors, mm -hmm. lots of lights, and driving in a predictable fashion where they have time to see you. Yeah, yeah. I'm way more conservative in the winter. Right, right around. And, and for multiple reasons. you got road conditions, mm -hmm. you got drivers that are struggling with the road conditions, and the drivers that are not expecting to see motorcycles. So yeah. you got a lot of stuff working against you. Okay, believe it or not, we're still in the foundation. So sorry. How about you determine your warmth level? This mm -hmm. is an important foundational principle to mm -hmm. cold weather motor riding. Different strokes for different folks. An example I'll use is a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag, let's say you get a down bag, it's rated for 20 degrees. You go out and what do you know? It's a 20 degree night. You get in that bag and you freeze your ass off. That's both of us. We're both that way. And we're cursing the rating on that bag. How many times have I gone through that? Yeah. I don't know. Hundreds? <laughs> So I always say, take the rating of a sleeping bag, add 30 degrees Fahrenheit to it, and that's what its actual rating. So if it's 20, it's 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. but, but maybe you're a rare individual. You climb into that bag, and you have a good night's sleep at 20 degrees. And for yeah. you and your body, mm -hmm. it works. Different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. Sean and I are very similar to our what we consider hot and cold. We're very similar, because we've ridden so many times together I already know if I'm going to delayer, he's going to delayer. If I'm going to uplayer, he wants to uplayer. Now, granted, he said he'd go to 20 degrees. I can go to 20 degrees. It's just a preference mm -hmm. because I'm more of a pussy than he is, apparently. <laughs> That's <laughs> <Just> true. <laughs> but we, we are, wouldn't you say we're similar? Oh, yeah. yeah. Temperature wise, we're Very just similar. like, yeah, we, we don't like being cold, uh, which, by the way, don't be cold because it dries to safety. Mm -hmm. If you're cold, kind of like a dumb and dumber. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to be making good decisions. Why? Because you're not concentrating on the road because you're uncomfortable. Maybe to the point where it is a huge distraction on you to pay attention, to have a wide situational awareness on what's going around you, Look at evaluating road condition, or evaluating traffic, right. leaves in the road, painted road surfaces that may or may not be wet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because even if it looks like the rest of the road is dry, but those paint strips will actually stay wet a little bit longer. Dangerous. Over them. So, yeah, yeah, and it's and actually, I don't know. Do you want to talk about the throttle thing then? Mm, so <clears throat> we're going to get to that. Are yeah. you talking about the hands? We'll come to the hands first. Um, I was talking the throttle. Like <clears throat> the nice thing about talk this to it now. Coming down. <clears throat> so this. Um, You're getting over your sickness too, aren't I am. you? Yeah, I'm still going. We're doing well. <laughs> So uh, this particular FJR is a 2014. It has um, the touring mode and the sport mode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throttle control. I see what you're saying, yeah. And so um, when I'm winter riding, I will dial this thing into touring mode, but it stays in sport for 90% of its life. Um, but the touring mode, what it does is it's, it evens out those throttle responses so you're not getting that jerkiness, mm -hmm. and that helps to keep the rear wheel from sliding every time you hit something that's a little bit more slick. So road conditions changing all the time. If you have electronic or mechanical advantages like that that you can use, those are great features to have for a winter bike. 
Um, the other thing is, you know, for you dirt bike riders, you know, I do a lot of clutching. Um, I, I do tend to do a lot more clutching in the wintertime because I'm trying to make sure that my wheels are getting as much traction as I can through spots that are less uh, abrasive on the, on the road. Those slick spots, you want to you make sure that you're taking care of yourself going through those because there is a higher risk of laying your bike down. So definitely go with that. So would you say our cold level is uh, pretty intolerant? I would yeah. say I have a pretty yeah. intolerant cold level. Oh, yeah. no, then when no. I'm on the bike, I definitely want to be warmer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I will, hang on, some more high quality production guys, sorry. <laughs> I definitely will layer up to get that level of comfort. Yes. We'll get to the specific, trust me, yes. we're going as quick as we can. But that's an important thing to know about you watching this video. Mm -hmm. Where are you at? Maybe you're hot blooded. Mm -hmm. You'll take less layers than we will. You mm -hmm. can throw on maybe a climb with nothing else under it, a shirt and this and drive, I highly doubt this, but let's pretend, in 20 degrees, and you go, I'm good. All right. I've seen guys rolling down the highway on their bikes, yep. and they have a windbreaker or nothing else, yeah. and they're, they're not shivering, they're just doing what they do. Yeah. Let me say this too, and this comes from camping, important point, calories. Because if you don't have calories to burn in your body, you will get colder. If you've ever done snow camping, some of you all have in the audience, I know, mm -hmm. and you climb your sleeping bag and you're freezing, Chances are it's yeah. you haven't eaten anything and yeah. your body doesn't have anything to burn. Mm -hmm. If you eat a, a decent meal, I'm not talking like you got to go, you know, go crazy, but put some <laughs> calories in there, yeah. have something to burn. You're going to be warmer in cold weather. And by the way, that's another benefit to riding in cold weather. You can eat more calories. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You want to keep <laughs> We're all about riding meats as you know. Keep, keep the furnace going. <laughs> yeah. All about it. Uh, so determine if you're hot blooded or cold blooded mm -hmm. and then talk about cold soaking long versus short rides yeah so uh, you know cold weather riding but this is an important point yeah when we're talking about like those 20 degree rides i'll do those for up to 25 30 minutes all day long that's not really a problem but when you are going in 20 degree weather if you're planning on riding more than an hour you are going to get cold soaked so your gear that you thought was okay because you've been riding back and forth to the store for the last six months on it, mm -hmm. you're, you're probably not. You're not going to be okay for over an hour because there's cold spots that you'll find. So, um, so the, long, the long distance riding, what ends up happening, and this is where it's good to do that just for experience and to teach yourself what kind of gear you want to get, is as you're riding down the road, you will find your cold spots. And so, and everybody's bike is different. Everybody's, you know, uh, safety gear is different. Their helmets are different. So, you know, you might get a cold spot on your neck, on your hands might freeze, Good point. your feet might freeze, maybe even your waist. On this particular mm -hmm. one, I got a problem with my midsection because the way the wind catches up on the bike, mm -hmm. it freezes out my core. And so I have to layer up a little deeper on the core just because of that particular wind factor. So that's how you can find out is go out and do a long ride and cold soak yourself and see where the spots are. If you were to ask me, are most riders like us as far as our temperature range of co being comfortable, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty representative of most people. Mm -hmm. That if if we get cold, we're not having fun, we start getting distracted. And honestly, we're experienced enough to this point, we'll pull over, Sean and I, and we'll go, something's got to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something's got to change. Either we layer up more, and generally we go very prepared, mm -hmm. and that's what we do. And then we change. We got a problem, mm -hmm. we apply the system to solve the problem and to continue the journey. Yeah. But I think we're fun. representative of most people. Yeah, keep it fun, right? That's yes. That way you're not riding down the road miserable. Maybe yeah. you can handle it. Maybe you can stretch into that zone, but why do it if you got warm gear on? Go grab some more. What, what's the saying? That there's no bad weather, just improper preparation? Yeah, I remember that. Some really smart guy said that about three years ago. <laughs> that's, um, that's you. <laughs> no. I didn't come up with that. That's been out there forever. Um, and let's talk about this. You mentioned how be on the that your, wind, or your midsection is getting blasted. Mm -hmm. Cold weather riding on the motorcycle. I know a lot of you guys love the naked bikes. I'm going to say in TMP, we don't really dig them that much. Mm -hmm. And we've never modeled them. Why is that? Yeah. Well, if you would have watched our rides, like the Grand Teton ride, we talked about it. PCH ride, we've talked about it. Multiple mm -hmm. rides in California, Utah, Wyoming. These discussions are happening. But as a refresher, it's because we're long distance. Okay, when you're long distance doing three, four hundred miles a day, sometimes longer, I think we've put down together almost a 500 mile day. That's oh, exceptional, yeah. that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. But you're getting blasted. One is fatigue, it's wearing you out, and you add in cold, like let's say it's 35 degrees out, let's just say it's 40, it's 40 degrees, then with wind chill, and you're getting an 80 mile an hour wind blasted yeah. on you. Yeah. 
cold soak yeah. is putting it lightly. Yeah. So you guys, I would recommend, as you're seeing on this 890, I have a taller windscreen. That's a Madstad, worth the money. Um, any wind protection, we're going to get to these when we talk about hands. What I use, what he's using, but wind protection is your friend. Anything you can do to get out of the wind, which may seem to be a little bit oxymoronic because people go, well, you're in the motorcycle. I thought you like wind. Right. To a point, but you want to be smart about it. Wind protection mm -hmm. is your friend. Anything you can do, especially in wintertime, is good. I find that in summertime, when we get to that top range, mm -hmm. I want less wind protection. So mm -hmm. I will go to a smaller windscreen. I've been known to do that. Sh mm -hmm. Shed all the grips for sure. Yeah. Just like we've oh, yeah. seen. And, and, and then you even have, um, on one of your, two of your bikes, I think, have those little wings that can K1600. suck air in. The K1600. The yeah, K1600. And those cool. things suck the air in and actually hit your core with it, which is huge. Yeah, Especially if you got a, a cooling vest on, now you're funneling wind through it. Oh, awesome. Heaven. So the K1600, <laughs> it's got a big old vent in the front uh, windshield. You can open it, close it. You got mm -hmm. fairing wind deflectors that can bring in air in, keep it out. It's got different deflectors on the side. It's the de best motorcycle I've driven to date. Yeah. For wind protection yeah. modular uh, all weather modular yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not that's just the foundation <laughs> nobody's watching at this point <laughs> i don't care i want to post yeah. it whatever it is and guy, the guys that do watch this it will help you trust me <laughs> it started with let's do a motorcycle winter video and now it's turning into a multi-part series okay. what i tell you when we're making our notes so <laughs> yeah. because i said i gave him a piece of paper i was like start making notes and both of us immediately just like Gee -gee -gee -gee. Yeah. we're just riding furiously i was like this is going to be a really easy yeah. video for us to make because yeah. we have so much experience oh, yeah. and so many opinions on what has worked and what hasn't worked yeah. Yep. Speaking of which, let's go into the specifics. And we're going to start off with, um, by the way, we talked about road safety. That was foundational. Mm -hmm. Make sure you evaluate your road condition. Before we go into specifics, yep. make sure there's no snow, no ice. Mm -hmm. Because when you, get, when you do cold weather riding, yeah. I mean, it's common sense, right? Yeah. And sometimes you're going to get caught unprepared. He and I have been. We've been down in south, southern Utah. we like, we got to get back because of our schedule. And we got into this huge a slush sleet storm mm -hmm. on the way back and we just slowed down and took it easy yep. talked on interphone the whole time hey is this safe do you think mm -hmm. and we just took it easy but it was on the brink where we we're going to call the ride yeah it was getting close and then you want to give a little bit of a give a little swerve once in a while just press on your bars make sure that you're still getting a little bit of good traction and the minute yeah. you feel uncomfortable it's time to stop because you're the worst thing could happen is you're going to lay down your expensive machine and you're done for the season because it's going to take a while to get that thing fixed. So evaluate your conditions and precip is, is one of those items that's a, a big no-go. If I'm sitting at home and I look out the window and it's precipping at all, well, I'm done. We're done. Yeah. Speaking of which, yesterday we had a ride planned. Mm -hmm. We can't cancel it because it was coming out. I was like, dude, no. Now, if it's in the world or I've got to go from point A to point B, and it's raining, then they're done that, I'll do it. I mean, I'll gear up, I'll put on the water gear, and off we go. Mm -hmm. But given an option, generally I'm like, eh, probably not. Yeah. And it came down Because it's a lot too. of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's, it's what you're going to get out of it versus the work you're going to put in. Amen. So, Isn't so. everything in life that way? It's like, how much work do I have? How much enjoyment, satisfaction will I get from the activity? If your work outlays, it's funny, because we rode together today, <laughs> yeah. and I said, hey, you want to do this ride? <laughs> I said we're going to go clear the hell down this one place. I'm not going to tell you where it is. And Sean's like, mm, probably not worth the work. Yeah. Because we were going to do some TMP gear testing, yeah. like night vision testing. Yeah. But literally we had basically five and a half to six hours of riding to make it happen. Yeah. For one gear item, more or less, maybe a gun in there. And he's like, mm, not worth the work. And I'm like, yeah. you're right, it's yeah. not. <laughs> Is yeah. it fun? Sure, but it's we got better things to do. Yeah, yeah. What you're going to get out of it just isn't quite there. And so, you know, you, you call an audible. Do something that's a little bit more productive. Checked. So you can still put in the same amount of work, still have a good time, but do something more productive. A lot of times if I look out the window and it's raining, that's not the most productive. <laughs> yeah, so what he's going to do is sit on a, the couch and play World of Warcraft. Yeah, Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Right. On we go to specifics. So, Sean... Let's start off with headgear. It's cold. Let's say our temperature is 30 degrees. It's pretty cold. Mm -hmm. So, What have you learned about helmets you bought, headgear, what do you wear, what helps you be comfortable? Mm -hmm. So with helmets, a lot of times their big problem is having enough ventilation for the summertime. It's not winter. You can always close all your vents for the winter, so that's great. You can stay warm, no problem. 
the problem with your headgear that you're going to find in the winter is most likely going to be fogging. Fogging is the worst enemy that you've got when you're right. riding in the winter because your breath the whole time is going up against the freezing cold windscreen and your breath is full of moisture and I've ridden with multiple helmets that had no fog resistance on that shield and it's miserable because now you're cracking the thing and freezing your face out so that you can see and so that's that's a bad bad deal. You're looking at one of my Shoei helmets this is an RF 1200 it's okay I'm not in love with it but it's paid for so I keep using it. It is lightweight, comfortable, and it's pretty quiet. That's why I got it. Quiet, but especially. parts off of it have broken and I've had to replace them. That's what irritates me. But you're looking at what Sean's talking about. This is a fog insert for the shoey field. A pin field. Mark. Visor is what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah. And this is critical, especially if you go to coastal areas. Like if you're going down on a Pacific Coast Highway where the humidity level is high, mm -hmm. anywhere, yeah. you're going to fog up. And generally, you're going to ride pretty much, and I've had to do this multiple times with your visor cracked. Yep. Just to keep it clear. Yep. Yep. Okay. Warmth wise, this is a relatively warm helmet. I've really never had any problems with most of my helmets, just like you mentioned, for warmth, except drafts. Yeah. Drafts can be a problem. What do yeah. you do to mitigate for drafting? Yeah. So that air that comes up, uh, hits my midsection on my bike, also comes right up and hits me in the chin, right? And so. You want to have a chin guard that you go right on the bottom of your helmet. This right here. Yep. Helmet. Most quality helmets will have this. Yep. And so that'll keep your drafting out. Also, to go down your neck a little bit because there's going to be a gap mm -hmm. between where your jacket closes and where your helmet starts. And so you got to cover up that gap. Okay. So <laughs> let me show you one of my neck gaiters is what he's talking about. I will tell you guys that this is like indispensable. And I'm talking not from 30 degrees. But I will ride with a neck gaiter oh, yeah. at 50 oh, yeah. because that cold soaking principle comes into play. So here's one of my neck gaiters, dudes. And look at how nice this is. I bought this at Revzilla. I don't know if they still carry this brand, but there's all kinds. You can buy them in Amazon. Just a Polar Tech fleece gaiter. And it just creates a wind dam between your transition from your cold weather jacket up to your face, to your helmet. Yeah. If I don't have my neck gaiter, I'm generally going to be an unhappy camper. Yeah. I, I tend to go with um, a balaclava and so oh yeah uh, I wanted you to mention that yeah so and you is, drive with that all year it yeah. seems like so this one I don't know if you can tell through the lights <laughs> it's, it's mesh and so there you go you can see a little bit through there mm -hmm. so this particular one is mesh and uh, it has the face part that pulls down really easy so I can go down under my chin in the summertime but if it gets a little bit colder I'll pull it up and cover up my nose and get a little bit more warmth that way and so this one is relatively flexible, but you can go with a thicker one and get a, a good winter balaclava if you have enough room in your helmet. It'll change the size of your helmet big time. Yeah. Though. Yeah. The upside to him wearing that balaclava is he's robbed some stores. They still don't know who did it. They're still <laughs> looking right. for him. That's right. Headgear though, that's basically that. There's really no electric options I've ever uh, done with that. But you talk about fogging, the net gator's huge. On we go to uh, gloves. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. If if I could say. In, in winter motorcycle riding, if your hands get cold, I mean really cold, it's going to be a shitty ride. <laughs> it's the worst. It's horrible because everything you're doing is from your hands, your dexterity. <laughs> I've ridden with him when his hands were freezing. Am I right? Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Sean, there. He, I know he's uncomfortable because he goes quiet. I go, hey, dude. And usually he's like, da, 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 da. I can't believe Biden. I can't believe this. I can't believe that. It's always one observation. And by the way, he's right on all those observations. <laughs> but I'm like, he goes quiet cold <laughs> what have you learned for hands dude hands are the worst They're because the worst. here's the thing when you're riding a motorcycle you can't just let go of the of the wheel and put your hands in your pockets to warm up that's not going to work and so when your hands get cold it is just miserable and you can't warm them back up and so your selection of your hand gear is going to be really important and even more important i found than any pair of gloves that i've gotten up to and including electric heated gloves is going to be your uh, wind protection. Oh, dude. Number one dude. most important thing. Uh, we'll get to the gloves here, but since you brought up, let me show you what we're riding on our bikes. The wind protection that you can and should put on your bike for winter riding, uh, you're dumb not to do it. On my KTM 890 Adventure there, you're going to see an older version of Hippo Hands. Now, this version has long been discontinued. Hippo Hands, thankfully, is still in operation. They're still making... Um, these hand guards, mm. they don't make this, the push through that have the little wrist opening because I think they were too dangerous for people. Mm -hmm. I suspect that someone wrecked mm -hmm. and they blame the hippo hands. But yeah. 
And what you what, you have storm guards on yours, right? Yeah, these are bark busters. Yeah. Those are awesome too. Yeah. I have those two on some other bikes, and they are fantastic. They're not quite as warm because they're. Right. Am I even filming that right? Probably not. They're they're open ended. Yeah. So this from here basically it has the same cutout on the bottom, and so you have access to your grips very right. easily. But they don't cut out the wind nearly as well as those old hippos do. The hippos are so good that you do not believe it or not. I can't believe I was going to say this. You do not need heated grips. Absolutely. And this is interesting. We're going to get to electric versus non-electric. Trust me. Mm -hmm. But let's. He brought it up. The wind protection. This is how to make your gloves for season. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first got back into motorcycling in 2013, I uh, grew up riding in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I just left it for a while. I, I forgot some of the lessons I had learned yeah. from cold weather, and I thought that I could get a good winter glove, and I'm good to go. Right. Have you gone that path? Ski gloves? Yeah. I'm like, well, oh, even I'm riding good. gloves. Yeah. Oh, riding gloves, the, you know, the, the thickest, warmest pair of gloves you've ever worn yeah. usually aren't quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, and my hands started to freeze. I like this is not working. Yeah. That's when I went on a hunt for is there any type of wind protection I can give myself? Yeah. And by the way, let me say this: even with grip heaters, oh, those yeah. gloves ain't enough. Yeah. Because I do a long ride, get cold soaked. Mm -hmm. I'm freezing my ass off. My fingers are cold. And I'm like, God, I've got problem. Yeah. Yeah. Problem is that my hands are still cold <laughs> right. after getting warm gloves and grip heaters. Still cold. This is where we arrived. You yeah. see, he's got them. I got them. You'll probably see most riders, unless they're just hot-blooded, mm -hmm. most riders that ride in the cold are going to have some type of grip um, guards on yeah. them to block the wind. Remember the wind protection. Yeah, and I mentioned the snowmobiling, like as though you're going to go snowmobiling. The snowmobiles are built for people wearing big, heavy winter mittens. You can't wear those on a motorcycle because you have to operate. Yeah. You have to have dexterity. You're going to want to operate your, your brakes, your throttle, your clutch, right. your signals, all that stuff is up on your hands and you cannot do that with, with mittens. So I would recommend not even trying because... And mittens keep all fingers together, that's why they're warmer, so that they're heated yeah. together. Once you separate them via a glove, they're going to be colder. Exactly. The other lesson I learned is I said, well, um, this is when I first got back to motorcycle. Like, well, these motorcycle gloves are kind of expensive. I don't want to spend the money. I'm going to get one pair. So I started getting, now these are great ones, Alpine Stars Chrome Gloves. Watch for my review po to be posted on the B channel here in TMP. Great warm weather gloves. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have gloves like this and you're like, oh, they're perfect. You're going to learn real quick. They are not perfect mm -hmm. without wind protection. Now, if I were to use these summer gloves with these wind protectors, believe it or not, to probably, for me, my body, mm -hmm. probably down to about 35 degrees, they would actually be okay. Oh, yeah. And I have really high dexterity with a summer glove, but I'm using the hippo hands mm -hmm. or the good, blizzard. And that's a good point is that the dexterity, you the more and more you glove up, the more dexterity you lose. And right. I can't even, half the time when I'm turning on my signals, it's just kind of by where the guessing. switch might be. That's <laughs> the downside of this because yeah. I can't see my controls with well, that. And I can't feel them with my. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're wearing big fat gloves, you can't feel anything, and so it makes it a lot harder to operate your system. So the so the more gloved down you can be, the better off, and that's where putting the hippo hands actually makes a big difference. Is yeah. Now you can glove down. So. And by the way, that's some of those touch sensitive pads I put on the the Alpine Chrome gloves, and then I can use my phone. A lot of the gloves are advertised as being phone friendly, but as we found out, they're not so much. Now, this is a pair of. React, Cyclone, and they run very small, so you're gonna see them in XXL. They're still small on me. They're basically like larges. That's one thing that all these motorcycle glove manufacturers need to get right, their damn sizing. They're sized for munchkins. But this is basically sold as an all-weather riding glove. So it's gonna have heavy-duty leather reinforcement, slider in the palm. I'm not going into all the specifics, but you would look at this and go, it's not a gauntlet glove, it's a short wrist glove. Mm -hmm. But you'd go, oh man, that'd be pretty warm. Yeah. You're gonna freeze in this. Yeah, that's not not warm. Unless you have wind protection, you're even with grip heaters, you're gonna freeze your ass off in these, and and that's without precipitation. Yeah. Talk to when the, your gloves get wet. Oh no, you're if your gloves get wet. You are, and it's forty done. degrees. For, dude, even fifty. If it's fifty degrees and your gloves are wet and you're going through seventy mile an hour wind the whole time, your hands will freeze. <laughs> you're gonna be looking for a hotel or to jump in the tent. You're just yeah. like, ah, oh, this is done. That's it. Yeah. So I would say, this, as far as getting your hands warm in the winter time, this is job one is getting wind protection for your hands. Right. Your motorcycle is not a winter motorcycle if you don't have wind protection for your hands. Now during this video you've seen overlays of us riding. When it's appropriate I may show you some uh, close-ups on our on our windshields. 
not windshields, but a hand shields that we've been talking about mm -hmm. as we go on. Okay, grip heaters. Mm -hmm. I think you're dumb pretty much to get a motorcycle that you intend to go relatively long distances on without grip heaters, true mm -hmm. or false? True. If they don't have grip heaters, uh, should you put them on? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. How Half much does market. it cost you? Maybe 40 to 50 bucks. That's you can right. get them cheap. You yeah. can get them cheap. They're not really expensive. They're easy to install, very easy, and they work great. They're, They're hot. Awesome the aftermarket grip yeah. heaters, Usually dude, just, they crank in heat. It's either on or off. <laughs> so, and so, they get yeah, warm. They, they get hot. And that so, might be a disadvantage, though. They, they yeah. don't have multiple levels, depending on which one you get. Yeah. Uh, Doodle, we put some on his V Strom 650 DL 650. Mm -hmm. He loved them, but he found that they got really hot. Yeah. So he would cycle them mm -hmm. on and off. Mm -hmm. Okay, but grip heaters absolutely mandatory. The good news is with bikes that you're going to buy new these days, like the 890, for instance. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. They do piecemeal some things like grip heaters on the 890. Yeah. I think they, they're extra that you have to buy, which is cheesy. But most all the Japanese bikes will have them. Yeah. Which yeah. is good. Yeah. Your FJR comes with them. FJR comes with them. Yeah, pretty much everything touring after, say, 2012, you're, yeah. you're good. So for 12 years now, all the motorcycles have been coming out with grip heaters if it's a touring setup. So that's good. And the grip heaters, um, those aftermarket ones, they, they do, because they wrap around your grip, uh, they usually aren't part of, you know, they can't uninstall underneath the rubber. They're wrapping around it. And so it will, you know, change your, your throttle control and all that other stuff. So a lot of times, once it gets warm enough where I'm not worried about freezing anymore, I'll take them off. Um, I have another motorcycle without grip heat, and so I put the aftermarket ones on there. I pull them off right around the April time frame. So, um, so one of the things that Sean's put up with is, I still keep a bike in California. I have a place to store it. I have buddies in California that help me out with that. And when Sean comes in, so like we'll get the $89 Super Savers and fly down there. It's actually pretty cheap to go to California. Yeah, but we, speaking of riding all year, it's a great way to ride all year. Oh, yeah. Because California, when we ride, the high boost is still in California, by the way. And so is my FJR. They may be coming back. Different story. But um, you always have to wait for me to take my grits off. Like I always have, these These are always coming on and off, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. And those, yeah. so these Bark Busters or Storm Guards, the barbuster storm guards those are a little more complicated because you're putting them through the end yeah, weights you have to screw a, a hole through the uh bar end so all yeah. right moving along for this two hour video uh upper body how to stay warm when you're motorcycling this is actually a fun part because hands are super important let's say we've got that covered but now body what have you learned and mistakes you've learned in driving in cold weather. What what worked for you, what didn't? And then we'll get into my yeah. systems. And yeah, so in, as far as your core goes, right, um, especially with your jackets and everything, that's gonna be the easiest thing to keep warm. So here's, here's the problem that you're gonna face, and they tried to solve this a little bit with this one, is the overlap where the zipper goes up. And so they have buttons, they've got zippers that are waterproof, they've got all kinds of good stuff, but guess what? It's still, the air will just keep blowing in there and it'll just sneak and it'll get cold. So you're saying even when you're zipped up and you're buttoned up, you still get an air flush coming through there. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, this, by bad. the way, is called guttering. Well, this is actually not designed for airflow, it's designed for water. Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to do is prevent water getting through that zipper. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I agree with you, you're still going to get airflow coming through yep. there. Yeah, it still blows in. And so you want to layer. Layering is kind of the key. You want to have your, if it's really cold, we're talking under 20 degrees for a long distance ride, I am going to want a base layer mm -hmm. underneath my shirt, then I'm going to layer up a vest, yes. then I'm going to put my jacket on. Because that gives you a lot of flexibility. So especially if you're changing elevations a lot, you're going to start out in a lower area that's a little bit warmer. Maybe you don't need all that stuff, but as soon as you get to the base of that hill, it's probably not a bad idea to stop, fuel up a little bit, and put your layers on because you start climbing that hill and it gets really cold. Speaking of which, you can start a ride in California in the Central <laughs> Valley. Yeah. It'll be 70 degrees. You'll go up on the pass of the Sierra Nevadas, and it's literally at night 20. Yeah, yeah. I've had 50 degree apart. swings. I've talked about it, shown it on TMP Moto Motorcycle Adventures. Let me get to his point, what he just said. Let me show you what I would be wearing to start out on a winter ride. This is just starting out. I'd have a t-shirt on. On top of the t-shirt, I'm gonna have a Thermax or Polar Guard, relatively heavyweight, usually zip front, high collar, a thermal top. So this is gonna be my second layer. On top of that, I'm gonna have some type of jacket, usually polyester, but sometimes down, because down travels so well, just don't get it wet. Mm -hmm. 
So this is just one I got free with points from me using my Cabela's card. It's a great one. It's just really simple jacket and I'll put that on and then I'll put on my Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. my Klein. That I'm, I'm pretty set with you're that's well. probably down to 30 degrees. Oh yeah, you're doing well. Depending on what's going on. Yep. And then I may, but Sean, is that all we're bringing? No, no. <laughs> you're you're going to want a little bit more than that too. So when you get out there and it, it, if it does start pre sipping especially, uh, I love having a nice big double XL, triple XL. Yeah, you want a waterproof, windproof, like a windbreaker jacket, but you want it to be so big that it can go over all your yes. motorcycle stuff. And then if it does start raining, then you've got something that's gonna really keep all that water out and all your layers underneath you are gonna keep you nice and warm. Speaking of which, speaking of details, mm -hmm. this is a, see how this is cordura, so is this. Mm -hmm. They all come with what's called DWR, durable water repellent. And mm -hmm. let me put that over there carefully. <laughs> This is, it's great for the first year, but it's gonna wear off. The beating of the water will go away. If you ride a lot with it, this will soak in water. Mm -hmm. So what he's talking about is getting an out exterior layer, rain jacket where you don't even soak this because once this gets soaked, it's gonna add a lot of water weight. It's gonna have evaporative effect on you and cool you down, use that. That's just a pro tip. Mm -hmm. And to answer the question, I will travel with another layer. And so even, small, they're so thin. Those, those waterproof uh, They travel layers, easy. Oh, they're super thin. And so they're, they're super light, super thin, easy to travel. And it's, it's number one benefit. Honestly, that's almost better than the base layers. It's like, Amen. if I have to choose between a base layer or the outer, I'll, I'll take that outer shell all day long. This is something else on the same ride I'd be caking. Now, not both of these. This is, I think, also poly. This is probably Prima Loft jacket. And this is how I travel with it. Rubber banded up. Here's another variation. I do try to size these pretty tight on me because they're going underneath my climb or other riding gear. Okay, so we have options. And this is going on a no kidding, as I call it, a road technical drive where we're going to higher elevations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're going to just go to Starbucks ride, it's a 50 mile ride, mm -hmm. this is overkill. You don't need any of this. This no. is, you can go with just this, mm -hmm. just this. I mean, it's a short ride. We're talking cold soaking mile after mile after mile. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's standing in an arctic level wind <laughs> whatever Forever. temperature you've got and it's going to be hours. Just so. consider, what's that show, Wicked Tuna? <laughs> Wicked Tuna. It's Wicked Tuna. Yeah. What well, yeah. you're doing going Wicked Tuna. Wearing a dry suit. <laughs> now, no doubt some of you guys, you riders out there are going, well, that's all cool, but I want heated gear. Um, believe it or not, I do have some heated gear. This is a heated vest. It's a battery operated heated vest. I actually do like it. I never, I never got a jacket. I just run with this vest. But Sean, are these simple to operate? Is it easy to work on, or what's your what's your take on all the heated and wires and all that other stuff? Oh man, this is a whole another topic. So let's hit it now because we're it. talking let's tour. So so here's the thing. Here's about. my battery that has to run with it. Yeah. None fancy. You label everything. Damn straight. That's why oh, I'm yeah. so organized, bro. Let's see if I can turn this off. Go ahead. So. The heated equipment is fantastic, but like everything else, you are adding a lot of complexity and complexity leads to failures. Right? And I'm so. trying to turn this on right now and it's not coming <laughs> on. Why? Why is that not coming on? It should come on. Keep going. It's got power. It does. Uh, so, so what you're gonna have, so I do actually have a, a heated jacket. There it comes, it came on. Regular jacket. Um, but so the biggest problems that I've seen is as long as you're just hitting highlights is that these batteries, if you leave them plugged in all the time, they will drain even when the vest is off. By so the way, that was fully charged about six months ago. Yeah. That's just been sitting and now it's half. And so you have to unplug that thing until you're actually ready to ride and then you plug it back in if your battery's still charged after sitting in the closet for a while. And then the other problem that you're gonna have is where the, the activator is located is Bingo. gonna be inside of your Bingo. Uh, so this gear. is under here. Yeah. How does he change that while he's riding? Yeah. With he a, doesn't. With a helmet, a neck gator, and he this thing zips all the way up. Yeah. Without really jeopardizing your road safety by That's doing right. it. You got to pull over and change it. That's a big deal. Yeah. That, go ahead. So, so yeah, so the location of your heating is, uh, of your controls is going to be a problem because it's going to be under all your other stuff. Um, now, if uh, anybody from Lime have to watch this in the future, it would not be a bad idea to have even like a one-piece suit or something that goes under and has uh, like a Bluetooth remote. I've seen it on uh, heated socks where they have a little receiver and you can Bluetooth it to your phone. So you that would be one app that would be useful. That would be useful. 
Um, and, but yeah, so th these have their limitations. The battery, you have to charge the battery now every night if you're on a multi-day ride. Or if you're going to go out the next day with your buddy, you, you don't have six hours to charge up the battery. It has to be charged almost all the time. I'll throw this in as a minor point, but also the battery's relatively heavy. We'll call it a pound. Yeah. And so it's more weight on your ass. Yeah. So yeah. all the weight, people go, well, it's not a big deal. Well, 400 mile ride, all that weight on your ass up. is a big deal. It adds up. Uh, let me throw in some positive things about this because I've driven with this multiple times. When we did our Central Utah ride, I did have this underneath my climb. I got to tell you, I actually liked it a lot. Yeah. It was nice. If I had the level set right, it was fine. It does have this particular model. And look below, I'll put some links to uh, Amazon to take you to maybe this one, but the models change all the time. So it has pleats in it so you can size it for your own level of fatness of which we all battle <laughs> as we get older. Uh, it's good to have, and this is just a vest, it's simple, it will change the sizing of your garment, however, because it's relatively thick. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and so that's where you want to have some roomy outer stuff. Uh, you don't want to be roomy. too tight. Yeah. It, it was, I'm glad you said that, because buy big. Yeah. Buy yeah. big. Especially if you're younger, and you're watching this, you go, man, those guys look fat. <laughs> I'll check in with you in about 20 years, we'll see what's up. <laughs> What's up, dude? And, and, we'll and see remember, what's up, young fella. And remember, the only reason you have a motorcycle is so you can find good food. <laughs> so, it's so true. It's but, so true. Okay, so, so, so the electronics I like. They, they warm you up. And I actually have it right here. I was going to ask you, do you have some? Because I don't remember you ride. Oh, but gloves. Why didn't you mix that for gloves, dude? Well, I forgot. <laughs> so he's got electronic gloves. I do have electronic gloves. But again, they're do not... Do you like them or not like them? Uh... It's a love hate I think relationship. That's an, I think that's an answer right it's there. It's a love hate relationship. The problem is that those little batteries in there, the bigger the battery you get, obviously, the more bulky and hard it's going to be to carry your gloves around. And the smaller the battery you get, the, long, the less they last. And then you've also got that same problem. They have to be plugged in. Now I've got two batteries, two gloves. They both have to be unplugged and plugged in every time I want to start or stop these things. Yeah. They've got the on off button located in a good spot. The gloves are a lot easier to access than the vest is. But it's still, uh, you know, you got to turn them on individually. You got to take the hands off. You got if you don't have cruise control, that could be a problem on the highway. Um, there's just a lot of limitations. I also find that these batteries will get into an interference when I've got, you know, my um, cuffs on the jacket. Sometimes the cuffs can fit over them. Sometimes they can't. And then you got watch problems too. If you're wearing a watch, it's going to be an issue. Speaking so. of which, uh, how about an IWC Aqua Timer today? You're welcome. IWC Aqua Timer. Links yeah. below. Enjoy. You guys, no, I'm just kidding. Ah, show him your watch because it's <laughs> shitty. It's, it's the same old one he's always had. And he told me today he's ordered three others. He loves it so much. That's right. I'm like, yeah. Sean. <laughs> this, this, it's I, it's I a whole my, thing between us. I treat me. my watches like magazines. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just a tool. Um, so, yeah. So the complexity. And, and nothing so this perfect. is a representation of the same problem you're going to have. So imagine now you've got two heated gloves. You've got a heated vest. You've got heated That's socks. three batteries. Now that's five, five maybe six if you have a battery free. Yeah. And that's just yeah. for your core, your hands, and your feet. So that's stuff. And let's say you're hoteling it on a long trip. Like you said, you got to remember to charge them up. Now maybe you're going, wait, wait, wait. You're typing on the board. You go, wait, nut face, you don't get it. I plug my heated gear in all the time. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> yeah, that, been there, done that. And by the way, let me be fair. I'm not going to say this sucks. This is a PowerLet controller for Gerber, whatever the heck it is. Heated boots, heated, uh, well, anything. You can do heated vests, heated pants. But look at all the wires. <laughs> and so here's some Primaloft pants that I got when I was an LL Bean field tester. And I modified them. I sewed these elastic loops on them to route this cable because it was such a pain in the butt to use. Because every time I took my pants off, the cable comes undone. And this is actually dedicated to this pair of pants and it goes to heated insoles for my boots. All right. The reason I'm saying this is because there's no... Don't look to heat, like electric and heated gear as like the godsend. It can be good, and I gotta tell you, when this is dialed in and it's working, I like it. Mm -hmm. It does. It makes me. It allows me to drive when it's much colder. Yeah. But it's complex. And enjoy the ride. It's complex. It's it's, it's, it's one of it's those. Not, it, <laughs> it's not. I don't like dealing with it. Is it worth? The, yes. the the hour of setup to try and yes. get the system just right yeah. so that you can ride. So if I'm not going to be riding for four or five hours, it's not worth doing it. So and then I got to take a mud blow because of where Sean takes me to eat, and now <laughs> I've got to unravel all this, this bird nest of cables and then redo. It's just yeah. so much work. It is, and so and that kind of gets to a little bit of conversation about the batteries versus the plug into the bike, right? So if you're plugging into your motorcycle, you have endless power supply. You can eliminate the having to charge on the overnights or have your batteries ready to go all the time 
you can plug it right into the bike and it's always got power. Still more cables though. But now you're running tons of cables. Because I got my hit air cable now, now I've got a power let cable coming up. Yep. And if, and if you're trying to plug that into gloves and boots and make sure all that's compatible and oh my gosh, I like there. If you <laughs> don't think what we're telling you is true, ride with someone who's running electric gear and I guarantee you, he's gonna have to pull over twice yeah. to just fiddle with it. Yeah. Wait, this isn't working. Wait, my setting's wrong. Wait, it's this, it's gonna be one thing after another. And by the way, I've done that. Mm -hmm. So. And I do think there will be a market solution at some point. It does not exist today. Not that we see. <laughs> okay. uh, and just what you're looking at is, I said, are we experts? For our type, type of riding, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. and for what we've done, how often do you and I run with electric? No, very, very seldom. Rare. Only, only if it's a long distance ride, like if we're going from yeah. state to state and I know it's cold, I'll go to the hassle of electric yeah. heated gear. Yeah. And I've got the gloves because I do actually just have those two batteries charged all the time because for me, in my riding, my hands are the biggest thing and I've had that experience like he was saying. <laughs> you know, I've gone silent and cold and I'm sitting there riding on the road and going, how am I going to get my fingers unfurled? <laughs> it's so bad. So, so that's why the gloves for me are worth the work. But man, to do the whole suit, you're talking a whole other level of complication. So, so there's yeah, waiting for a market solution on that. So you got. Climb. Let me throw this in. You may ask, hey, nothing fancy. I love the climb stuff. Isn't that Gore-Tex? The answer is yes, it is Gore-Tex. But nothing fancy. Do I need Gore-Tex? The answer I think is no, you don't. What you want is a waterproof outer garment. I think the Kilimanjaro has been pretty darn waterproof. Mm -hmm. I did say the fabric will get water soaked. That is true. That doesn't mean it's allowing it into interior. Can't speak into the interior of the jacket though. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's it got a really good seal on it. I know because I've ran Kilimanjaro's a lot. This is great. You don't need Gore-Tex though. That's my point. You want something that's waterproof. A freaking like a fisherman's well mm -hmm. commercial fisherman's outfit would work. Yeah. I and mean, if you got nothing else, do some waders. <laughs> put a bunch of base layers yeah. and put a wader on. You're not moving around. Now, the, yeah. all, the flip side to that is if you're doing some high activity motorcycling, like dirt biking, yeah. no, adventure no. touring, and you're going off road, that's different. But honestly, if you're doing that when it's wet and muddy, I say, you go ahead, I'll be in the hotel. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole <laughs> other level. That. That, that's dedication. Man. If you're doing <laughs> that kind of stuff, I mean, you, those guys have very specialized equipment. Well, they do that, but very few go when it's cold. Yeah. A lot of them are going to go when it's warm, and I say rock on. But yeah. how many guys get out when it's like 30 muddy, degrees and it's snowy. muddy, snowy? Mm. There's guys that will do content because it's unusual. They'll go to freaking, oh, you know, wherever, Russia, you know, Mongolia, and they're doing that just for views. I say go for it. Count me out. I have no desire. Okay, this is actually going to cover the whole body, but I want—I do want to cover riding suits. This one is called whatever the heck it is. I got it a few years ago. It is outstanding. Man, do I love this thing. And it comes in that super bright safety color. Yeah. I believe this is meant for snowmobiling. It looks like it. Because it has no built-in armor protection. We're going to circle back to that before we end this feature-length two-hour video, apparently. Mm -hmm. But this is a fantastic way to ride in cold weather with some caveats. Caveats is a lot of these are not built for crash. You said dress for the slide, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, Klein makes some one piece stuff that's great. It's Gore-Tex one piece, but I don't think those integrate body armor into them. Right. You can do body armor in different ways Other underneath. Way. And I'm talking like D3O mm -hmm. panels. This latitude does, it has D3O shoulder, D3O elbow. And I put in a big D3O back pad, go watch my review on that. Mm -hmm. Your yeah. climb does too. Yeah. <coughs> but and I, and I buy D3O for all. I've got mesh jackets. I've got, you know, this one. And every jacket I get, the D3O back pad at minimum. And then yeah. if I can get them, I'll yeah. This, when I drove today, this is what I wore. It has a ton of pockets. It's oversized. Probably the biggest one they make because I'm 6'3", not skinny anymore. And so this slides over my regular street clothes. And so I maybe I put a fleece jacket underneath this. This will take me... If I underlay under uh, what I say uh, layer under it, I can go to 20 degrees with this. Oh yeah. The thing is, I need to wear knee pads. Somehow put some armor protection in this, but this is a great option. I got this from Revzilla. I hope they still have it. It came in some great colors. I'll try to put the name on top of it, and that color is insane. I think it's called Acid Yellow. I like that. And, and a lot of you guys look at that color. And go, oh, that's oh, that's awful. I dress to be seen. Oh, that's one reason I'm still alive. It's good. This thing is really good. And, and I mean, I'm riding around with them all the time. It's always easy to pick you out of traffic. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's good stuff. 
And, you know, so we were talking a little bit earlier, too, about some of the under stuff that you can put on. They have basically skin tight, um, I guess they use them for uh, stunt work on movie sets and things like that. And so you can get those, and if you feel like spending a bunch of money, and you can put that on underneath, and it has pads all over the place. Chest protectors, elbow guards, shoulder protection, yeah. back protection, all that good stuff. And if you put that on as your base layer, and then you can put on your jacket or your heated vest or your you know one piece suit, all of that stuff can go over the top of it. Now you've got that protection and you've got the warmth and your base layer is actually what's protecting you from injury. So that's not a bad way to go either. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna go to lower body, dude. All right, lower body. Um, so the- We've got a pair of latitude to show them. So the first thing I'll say about the lower body protection is that depending on the design of your motorcycle, you may have almost no wind protection on your legs and especially your feet. And so you do have to give some consideration. We talked about how I used to start off with just snow pants, regular old skiing snow yeah. pants. And I would, you know, put those things on and that would at least keep my legs warm. And so if you have nothing else, that's a great place to start. But if you are tuning into this video because you're trying to figure out different gear options, you got a couple of, uh, a couple of options to look at here. Okay, so. I did not start off with the expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. I started off with cheap stuff. I went to Cycle Gear. I went to some no-name brands. I think the Built brand I used. I wasn't happy with any of that stuff, but I ran it for years. Even in the project, if you look at some of my earlier videos, I'm not kitted out very well. But like Sean said, you know, I, I just didn't know if I wanted to put the money into it at that point. So these these pants, by the way, these that's Sudici. That's a Cycle Gear brand. Cycle Gear brand. <coughs> they have improved over the years. So this mm -hmm. pant actually is not bad at all. And I have a pant very similar to this. And I think Doodle and I actually did a review on this and I haven't posted it yet. Mm -hmm. These look pretty similar, don't they? Yep. Look at this. Yep. And so, and a lot of times these this will have This brand a is HWK brand. Yeah. So this one I bought specifically because it was a multi-season. It has a breathable mesh. Right now I have everything zipped out, but you can zip in just a waterproof liner for the spring and fall riding. And then inside of that, it has kind of a, a quilted material with a little bit of fill in it. And so that's for full winter when it gets really cold. I'll throw that liner in there. And these pants actually do pretty darn well. And I want to say the Sedici branded is, uh, I think I ran about 130 bucks for these. They've gotten a lot better. Yeah. Like from 10 years ago, they weren't, I wouldn't say they're garbage, they weren't, but mm -hmm. they weren't like this. They weren't yeah. stiff, like super layered, like this climb stuff, it's just built so strongly. It's really built for the slide and durability. You're talking yeah. like two to three layers of the highest quality nylon and Cordura that mankind knows how to make. Again, this pair being like 10 years old. And here's the pair of pants with it. We're talking about staying warm on the bottom half. So, this is a motorcycle pant. He mentioned that, hey, we can start off with like ski bibs, mm -hmm. that's good. What I would recommend is you use hard shell knee protect protectors, I'll try to show you my Fox. Wear those underneath, maybe a padded set of uh, bicycle or motorcycle uh, shorts underneath that. Mm -hmm. What that will protect is a slide. So if you come off your bike, I've done it, my front tire locked up on a KTM, I was thrown off the bike at 60 miles an hour, I hit on my right thigh, I got a huge hematoma, it was there for a year. Mm -hmm. Basically a fluid filled pocket on my my thigh. Now I was lucky that I wasn't hurt more, mm -hmm. but that day I did not have good padded protection and I swore I never again am I going to go out and ride like that. That day I actually had a simple Cabell's Gore-Tex mm -hmm. outer on and I think I had shoulder protectors on too underneath. Yeah. A yeah. shoulder vest, it's like a dirt biker vest underneath that, but my lower half wasn't protected and I yeah. paid the price. Mm -hmm. This, this is a climb latitude paired with this. So we've got D3O knee pads and then I'm wearing hard shell under there. And what do you know, D3O. If you don't know what D3O is, just Google it. That's a, a look at it, it's orange. And it, it stiffens up under motion and it protects you. It's a multi-viscosity pad. And that's for hip protectors. But this will not keep me warm. This is more of a rain pant. Mm -hmm. So in that temperature range, what'd you say? Uh, 40, 40 to 80. Yeah. This is a 40 to 80 for me. Yeah. It'll do fine. Once I go above 80, even with the vents open, of which it has a lot, I start wanting more ventilation. Then I go mesh. I'll show you some mesh before we end. Mm -hmm. But then I need to layer underneath it yeah. some of those other pants. Oh, speaking of which, the yeah. layered pants. 
Where have they went? I had them, but it, they're like insulated layer pants that I just showed you guys rolled up. But I'll put those underneath this, and that will keep me warm. Yeah, yeah and that's kind of where, yeah, that's where if you can get it, you don't have to necessarily do the Sidichi brand, but if you can get it, I, I kind of like, I would recommend going with something that has the ability to just zip in those layers, and then when you take them out, just roll them up, rubber band them, and throw them in your Correct. case. Correct, take them with you. Yep. And Here. so, you, I, I almost always carry this and, and its layers with them. So let me show you what I'm running. Let's say it's 30 degrees out with our example. So I've got the paired bottoms, thermal bottoms. And by the way, these are really high quality one, ones. They've got like a waffle pattern. So they're relatively warm. Make sure they size you good. This brand, particular brand, runs very small. So I have to run them large. So that's my base layer. These are actually pants that I had that I showed you. This is what I'm talking about. So let me show you these. So these are insulated. Basically, they're snowboarder pants, but I've just bought several pair of these over the years. And this will be underneath. These are LL beans. And boy, they great Prima Loft or just fiber fill. There's my second layer. Okay, again, we're not talking electrically heated yet. And then here's my outer layer. How many times have I driven with that setup and been oh, yeah. totally comfortable? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up over mountain passes, mm -hmm. temperatures in the teens, single digit on occasion. He knows I'm comfortable because <laughs> my mouth is going like this. Da, 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 da. Sean, we need to do this. Hey, when are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? It's always about food with us, right? <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I can go down to pretty cold. My bottom half is much more resilient mm -hmm. than my top half for coldness. Mm -hmm. My top half, I need to be kind of cozy. Yeah. If I don't get cozy up here, I'm not happy. Down below, I can get more wind. I don't, I don't seem like I need to layer up quite as much. I can do really well until the really deep cold soak hits. I, I'm, I'm good for that first couple of hours, but once you get past that couple of hours, if it's temperatures down there in the 20s or teens, you're going to cold soak, and I've had times when I've hopped off the bike and my thighs are frozen. And That's so, correct. Yeah, you got to... You, you, longer rides take a lot more prep. So what's your layers though on, on you? So let's say we ride 30 degrees. Are you doing the same thing I'm doing? Three layers total? Um, or are you doing two? I'm usually doing the full winter setup on my pants. And that's what's that mean though? It, it, so it's, uh, it's a mesh outer, a rain liner, and then a winter um, quilted inner liner. And you're comfortable with that? It's comfortable. Are you wearing long johns, separate long johns underneath? I haven't, but that's actually, I, I think I'm at the point where I'm going to start doing that. because I have to have that. When it's a certain temperature, I would say 40 below. Mm -hmm. I'll put long johns on underneath. And if the whole ride is going to be 40 and below, then I, I know you can commit to that. The hard part about the long johns is that because it's a, not a layer that's easy to get to, it's so if the temperature yeah. is going to be going up to 50 or 60, yeah. long johns are staying home. <laughs> it's time consuming <laughs> it's, to peel yeah, those off. You yeah. got to go through suspenders, of which, by the way, I do recommend on everything. Mm -hmm. Suspenders, if you wear a two-piece suit, like to include my latitudes, mm -hmm. you may have seen I have integrated suspenders here. By the way, those did not come with it. I yeah. put them on. And that's mainly because of the slide. So a two-piece, so mm -hmm. I sewed these in, just hand sewed them. These suspenders, like if I come off the bike, your pants are going to want to come off your bottom, depending on how, which direction you're sliding. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can get them peeled off and have skin exposed. You want to either have them zip, you have a short zipper on a lot of these, but sometimes if for whatever reason it doesn't mesh, mm -hmm. suspenders are nice. And just for riding, because these, any really heavy duty riding pants heavy. And, and it's gonna want to fall down when you're walking around, absolutely. gassing up, and as going a, to get stuff to eat. As a side benefit, you know, you can keep your buttons all pants, you know, buttoned up and everything when you start riding. And then after lunch, you're gonna need to leave those unbuttoned and so the suspenders Correct. keep your pants from falling off. <laughs> And I wonder if I have, I got to show you an extension I made because of that, because of winter riding. <laughs> yeah. So winter riding. When you layer up. Yeah. When I layer up. You leave everything I, Yeah, your button. sizing changes. Yeah. Oh, dude, I have it here on the mesh pants. So <laughs> these are, these are not winter pants, but I have used them as winter pants. And also I bought them when I was skinnier. And now that I'm fatter, this is what I made. It's like an ex expansion thing. So I just made these with like snaps on it. Mm -hmm. And so it could snap and adjust to my fatness. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yeah. And then as I, and by the way, I go up and down in weight. I hope yeah. to be going down soon <laughs> as I'm working out more heavily now. But as I go down, then I don't have to buy another pair of expensive right. pants. Right. Size up. And I just did an adjuster. Now the downside is, is as I'm driving, this freaking zipper will come open. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Happy gets ventilated <laughs> pretty good. Hey, there's those suspenders again. And let's jump back to what we said, temperature range. So now you're looking at a mesh pair of pants. Mm -hmm. 
So this would be a temperature range around 80, higher. Yeah. Like this is also a Klein box. brand. Awesome. I love the extra sewed in. So I, I uh, actually yeah. sewed this in, and what do we have? Probably Honey Badger Large. Yeah. Look at that, dudes. So knife pocket yeah. sewn on. These are actually tester pants, so when I go out on the KTM, man, I put a lot of wear on these. <laughs> yeah. These have been washed so many times. Yeah. They got a little bit of fray showing there, but uh, yes, they're holding up well, though. They are. Oh, yeah. And there's my phone pocket all sewn on. This is all modifications I've done. But these are, and they have leather reinforcement, so they are protective. In this particular pair, though, I don't have D3 because they're a warm weather pant. They're not really going to give you that in the knees. They do have them in the back, or I either added them for your hips. Yeah, which also kind of brings us to uh, something that's a little bit of an interesting topic, especially for, I think, the TMP audience, is uh, weaponry on the motorcycle. Because if you're wearing a conceal and carry inside the waistband yep. on a lower layer of pants like I usually do, and then you're covering it up with motorcycle riding pants with suspenders and all that stuff, you need an alternative. And so, so here's an alternative that Nutton likes to use, is the tank bag pouch. <clears throat> is it fast? Absolutely not. The first rule of a gunfight is to have a gun though, and I will always have a gun. Mm -hmm. When you're on a motorcycle, your first option is to run away. Your best weapon is the oh, speed. Yeah. And maneuverability you have on the bike just run away and get sizing. out of there don't confront yeah. get out of there your, your sizing on the motorcycle is your biggest advantage you can slip yes. between cars i know that uh, you know lane splitting is not legal outside of california screw all that but if, if you're watching if you're this. trying to get away from somebody that's getting after you and trying to run you over then split the cars and go get out of the way so your motorcycle is going to be a lot easier to run rather than actually fight but if for whatever reason you get stuck in a you know a cornered area or if you lay down your bike and now you can't move anywhere so now you need something you can pull out oh, this is also <clears> in the tank bag i'll always have a blade mm -hmm. but like sean's making the point don't expect this is all easy to get to you're gloved right. up especially in winter clothing mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard to get yeah. to it's generally to be completely honest when your gloves are off yeah because you can access stuff quicker mm -hmm. and let's say well, for whatever so, reason you can't escape on your bike you're there then you have options and being armed is about having options speaking of which what's your gun uh today is the oh uh, laugh if you don't have it oh he's got it on him say 365 standard this is uh this is the old old school so nothing old about that yeah, and notice you had that during the ride today didn't yeah you? oh yeah it's this is my daily i just it's my unless i want to go a little bit bigger but the six the 365 is kind of my companion um <clears throat> now as far as if you really want to go nuts and, uh, and I've done this a few times because, well, A, because I kind of like it because it's cool and it's fun. But uh, I actually have a belt that I have dedicated to uh, motorcycle gunning. And so I'll put all my layers on and everything and then I will wrap it around, do the belt up, and then I have a leg strap with a relatively universal Safari Land holster. And I'll he has done my, that a lot. And I'll throw my Canik on there. And it I looks do it, good. I do it left hand because you're throttling on your right mm -hmm. hand, and so I am right-handed shooter, but um, if you had to pull it out in a left hand, shooting is better than nothing. So um, so that's actually, a, you know, it's almost like the old gunfighter's belt where it's separate from the one that holds up your pants. So that's that, that works really well. I've Motorcycling really is managing probabilities. Mm -hmm. and I think probability of me coming off the bike is much higher than an arm conflict. Mm -hmm. I have been known, especially if I'm wearing my leather gear, to run a Glock 19 and a Galco. Mm -hmm. Miami Classic rig. It looks great. It's easy to access. But I cannot wear an inflatable vest over it. Right. So this is just one I bought off an eBay, $160. This is an Air 02 vest. I got all the information there for you. Nothing fancy label and stuff. But this is a, a legit vest. So it says mm -hmm. CO2 powered. It comes off. It self inflates via leash. And it'll come around your back, your spine. Your rump area and protect you on a high side mm -hmm. style of crash and still has a d3o pad in the back yeah i upgraded there. that pad to d3o so mm -hmm. i had that today on today's ride mm -hmm. and it comes with a cheesy foam pad but that's easy enough to upgrade yeah. i'm showing you this because i want to remember safety is our primary objective but also in weaponry if i decide to go with a shoulder holster i can't wear an inflatable vest it doesn't make a lot of sense right because accessing it's a problem mm -hmm. Uh, generally, I'll just go without a yeah. vest. And, I, and I've seen some setups with a mount on a bike. In fact, I think you had one on the 1190 for a little while. Yeah, I did. I had the Glock so, mount on the side with yeah. the Serpa. Yeah, it was on the, uh, the they had a, he had a big crash cage on, on there the cage. And, uh, and mounted one of the Serpa Quick Connect uh, 
circle rings on there and then had a uh, circle holster to hold the Glock 19. Another great setup and it's out of the way, it's off your person and it looks badass. It does I gotta cool. say, you pulled it a lot and people were like, what? <laughs> and I, why did I quit running that? I, well, the, it was zip tied and the zip ties would age over time and also it made the whole rig wider and so I was rubbing into things and also I was afraid in the dirt when I was getting technical on the 1190 I was going to dump it and yeah. just smash the gun. Crush the gun. And I was like, eh. Yeah. That's, that's a more Is looking cool that important? <laughs> Because it really was about looking cool. <laughs> right. Uh, here's a leather option. I want to throw this up because show you that <clears throat> this is an adventure. Uh, what is it? A ADV Sport. Mm -hmm. This is like my super sport rig, and it zips into the pants. This is the most protective mm -hmm. style of suit I have. I'm showing you this to let you know, though, it's not really cold weather. I can take this to about 40 degrees with layering underneath. But since this is sized more tightly to my body, I look like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man when I'm out cold riding. <laughs> Generally, I'm going to have to go with something like this. And once it goes below 40, this is out. This is more warm weather, and it's great in warm weather. Actually, I'll option for this all the time. Okay. Yeah, this is that. <laughs> Until it gets cold. The leather jacket that I got is my primary for that uh, 40 to 80 range. And so, I, I don't know if I'd go all the way down to 40, honestly. Like, I have a little bit less tolerance. Than yeah, stuff. well, the I'm leather. talking with the, like the layers. It's oh, like the down layers in it. it? Yeah. So, with the zip, this does have a zip in thermal liner yeah then the down and top of it then the neck gator i'll go to 40. yeah but i if i get cold soaked yeah i'm going to be unhappy up for about yeah. 150 miles and and these don't have that stretching capability no they you don't can't, you can't size up the levers they, they're pretty much what they and are. if it starts raining guess what stays wet oh yeah that'll soak on you so. moving along feature length cold weather motorcycling is anyone still there no okay anyways we're continuing boots very important uh, I forget the name. Oh, these are Formas. These are awesome boots. These are actually uh, like dual sport moto boots. They're very supportive. Ankle support, slide support, strong. They're comfortable to walk in. Pads for the bone that sticks out the yeah, side. Yeah, notice it has ski boot level style of strapping. Mm -hmm. So the, basically when you look at a boot, yeah, we want to be warm, but you really want to be ready for the crash. Mm -hmm. Last suspect, my son, had a pretty gnarly crash on SV650. He totally effed up his ankle. He still to this day has pins in him. And one of the reasons is he had really poor motorcycle footwear. Get the stiffest boots you can freaking put up with and pay the money. This is somewhere. It, this took me a while to get to a point to understand. <laughs> I had my old boots. They're gone now. I would guess. But it took me a while to understand because I was buying these old cheapo, you know, motor, motocross boots. They worked. But I finally just said, you know, I need some good boots. So these are my probably my favorite boots. And they're pretty darn warm. If I wear like a sock like this, I don't know if I can fit this thick one, maybe one thinness down. This is pretty warm. I can go down to easily 40 mm -hmm. on a drive. But if you and I are driving for 300 miles, I'm probably going to put in my heated insoles and put mm -hmm. up with the wires. Yeah, <clears throat> or heated socks or some sort of uh, alternative. And, and honestly, guys, here's something that, you know, a little bit of insight into where I'm at. The, the boots that are at all worth buying are so expensive i still don't have a pair um i still put up with you know riding basically hiking boots he does i'm looking at them right yeah. now and so i'm, I'm these are some of my shittier pair which i still have no protection in them at all yeah and that's the not, these are garbage you see this the squishy it's they're Th not there's this is what they're just last suspect was wearing when he crashed yeah. and something like this and his foot just got completely destroyed yeah, yeah. why do i still have them because i still use them to be honest once in a while, if you have. Yeah. Once in a while. Generally, to the point now, either I'm going to gift him to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so, Do like that gift him? <laughs> hey, these are shitty. Here's your boots. <laughs> what right. size is your foot, by the way? I'm 11 to 12. Okay, I'm more of a 11. I don't know if they fit you. Yeah. You wouldn't want my stinky <laughs> footwear anyhow. <laughs> but it is, it's one of those things. I was looking at these <coughs> dirt biking boots as well. I got a cheap, crummy pair of dirt biking boots. I say crummy. Formas, they're, baby. They're very protective. But they are so stiff. They're like moon boots. They're not comfortable. You can't walk in them. Yeah. They're awful. But my son, he got good enough for the dirt bike and that he actually decided to buy a decent pair of boots. And let me tell you, you are going to spend. I mean, holy cow. It was... I $500 think, is not unusual. Yeah. His boots, I want to say, are in the upper threes, low fours. I they think were, these are around three-ish. Yeah. And so, but, you know, I, I think I'm at the point, too, where, you know, I'm, I'm saving towards getting a good pair of boots because it's yeah. worth... Buy once, cry once, don't buy the cheap ones because they will not perform the same Warmth, way. protection, comfort. Yeah. And just and not just that, but off the bike too. I've had boots that are okay on the bike, and then when I start walking around, I get like plantar fasciitis and stuff. Oh, really bad. 
This, by the way, I did say Gore-Tex for the main body, not really necessary. I would recommend a Gore-Tex or some type of membrane for your boots. These have Drylex. It's very, it's basically Gore-Tex, just a different name brand. And that's because your feet do generate a lot of moisture, mine do. You want to stay as dry as you can with your feet. And notice these are high enough, they go above the ankle, so I can drape my pant over it, create a layering for precipitation. These are fantastic boots, highly, highly recommended. Maybe one day I break out a separate review, but that's pretty much it right there. Good soles too. You need to get your boots, bro. Yeah, I need to get a pair of and they go to all disciplines. I ride this with Hayabusa, ZX14, uh, KTM 690, 500's gone, sold that one. All disciplines, this boot can flex. Does it look perfect? No, but who cares? Yeah. And that's it. Cool. Uh, so we talked about safety, wind protection, uh, impact protection, we've kind of thrown that off, uh, in here and there. That's kind of the base. It's like if, if yeah. you don't have impact protection, then what are you doing? So, so yes, yeah. impact protection is underlying all of these. Now, what you've seen in this feature length motorcycle cold weather riding gear video and a safety video, to be honest, is that stay warm, stay comfortable. It's going to make you ride safer, better, but do ride. Maybe it's not your jam getting out in 35 degree temperatures riding your motorcycles. We love it. And what you're seeing and the stuff we've shared to you is where we are now. I feel at this point myself, I'm pretty evolved as a rider. I've gone through so many weather conditions, so many different rides. I'm really happy where my system is. I think you got a couple holes that you're working on, like yep. your foot gear, yep. but you're almost there. The reason I know that is because he's still talking on interphone during the ride. <laughs> it's comfortable. So there. But you know, and the thing is too, uh, you know, we, we talked about why you want to ride in the winter. A lot of it is because guys, do you really want to take uh, a six or seven month break and then hop on your motorcycle and yeah. have to refresh everything in oh. the spring? Ride like, all gear. Keep, keep your keep your skills up, and uh, and if there's a clear sunny day with dry roads and it's cold, well, shoot, you can overcome the cold, right? Correct. No such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate attire. If you guys are wondering what that tape is, it's actually for the clip on the GoPro. So I take my sk my skirt off right here, my chin skirt, and then this clips. This is a great clip, whatever brand it is. This is how I I do all our motor vlog stuff now. Works pretty good, and I just clip it off. I can unclip it, show the scenery clip it back on this helps with traction and then when it's not being used I put my chin screen in there otherwise I get debris flying up into my eyeballs and then we're using uh, Senna 20 S's mostly these days they're hard to pair holy hell are they hard to pair but other than that we do like <laughs> yeah them. once they're paired they work great but, yeah. the, but the pairing is a process of a lot of times and um, and the, the GoPro miking that's been a huge project that one yeah. is, that one's taken a lot of time with a lot of different components that have taken a lot of uh, of course every other motor vlog channel gets it right we just don't know what we're doing yeah i don't know what to do maybe we'll invite one of those guys along to ride sometime no uh, i'm gonna, not riding with them you <laughs> gotta keep through that i don't want to ride with them all right dudes we're done thanks so much for watching this has been sean the tmp here nothing fancy motorcycles are core content in the project not too much but just here and there i do like balancing it out it seems like most tmp ears all they care about is guns 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 <laughs> And predictions of modern civil war which is holy shit expand your world please mm -hmm. i've been trying for a long time to have people here well, expand their world please expand your world do other things here's, in life. here's a little philosophy for you <laughs> you work to live don't live to work mm -hmm. so have your guns to protect yourself don't live for your guns don't good point <laughs> so like, good yeah, point there like, are a tool in our systems yeah. to get certain things done and that certain thing is freedom and protection of family and friends mm -hmm. see ya take care